So you're getting started with loose leash walking training with your dog and quickly run into lots of different roadblocks. Your dog's getting frustrated, you're getting frustrated, you're seeing an increase in leash pulling, a decrease in attention, and your dog just wants to do everything else that you don't want them to. My name is Abby with Positive Futures, and today we're going to talk about different reasons why you and your dog may get frustrated with loose leash walking training and how to address those issues. So on the human end of things, think about the last time that you were frustrated. Say that you were going to a nearby park in your neighborhood and there was construction traffic and it ended up taking you 30 minutes instead of five minutes to get there. You were probably raising your voice, you were probably you know, grabbing the steering wheel, and that trip to the park probably didn't end up being as enjoyable as you wanted it to be because your expectations were different from the actual reality that happened. That same exact thing can happen to our dogs if we do not set expectations with them and make sure to systematically increase the difficulty only as they're ready and they understand what we're looking for from them. So that same exact frustration from a lack of understanding those expectations in our dogs can look like dogs who want to get to every single smell on their walk and they're not allowed to anymore. Dogs who want to go up and greet every person or every dog that they see whenever they were a puppy and now they're no longer allowed to do that anymore. We may see dogs lunging on leash. We may see see dogs who are not responding to normal cues that they really normally would whenever they're in the kitchen or in your house. Um, and we see dogs with decreased attention. So they're not giving you that attention that they're normally giving you whenever you're practicing in a much easier environment or you're practicing a much easier exercise. So let's talk about a few common moments that your dog typically becomes frustrated whenever you're leash walking training and what we can do in the moment to help address that frustration and even prevent it before it starts happening. So we see very commonly with a lot of our clients that as puppies, when they were being socialized, they were allowed to greet every person or every dog whenever they were out and about on leash. That's usually because puppies are super cute and because we wanna make sure that they're having lots of good experiences, meeting all different kinds of people and dogs. So as they grow up and they start getting bigger, we start to not allow those greetings every single time that we're out and about and we see another dog or another person and our dogs are not necessarily understanding why this expectation is not allowed to happen anymore. Generally in these situations, I recommend working proactively a lot on prompting your dog's attention while there are distractions present, but making sure that we're incrementally increasing the distraction level only as they're successful. So that may look like anytime you see a person or a dog approaching whenever you're out leash walking with your dog, make a little bit of space from that person or dog, take a few steps back, take a few steps off the sidewalk, cross the street if you need to, and then from there, get your high value treats out and start prompting attention from your dog. You can do this by saying their name, you can do this by making secondary noises like and anytime they look at you instead of the distraction, give them lots of high value rewards for that. This is something that I usually start working on even in puppyhood, even in that early socialization window. Sometimes we greet people and dogs, sometimes we don't, so that the puppy is learning that that expectation of always getting to greet every single person and dog that they see is not actually happening. Teaching your dog a go say hi routine is another really great way to set some structure and help your dog learn when greeting is going to be available and when greeting is not. I like to prompt my dogs for attention. I like to ask them for a calm stationary behavior. Usually this looks like a sit. And if I can get my dog to sit with me, they can give me attention instead of the other person. And I can feed that and reward that. I will then send them to go say hi to go greet that person allow them to greet briefly, and then call them back to me for another high value reward so that those greetings are short, sweet, and very structured. And my dog knows exactly what to expect because that's always what happens anytime they're allowed to greet somebody. However, if you have a dog who already has gotten very frustrated about not being allowed to greet other people when out and about, I will actually start a little bit smaller than asking my dog for a sit and instead just get that eye contact from them, see if I can prompt their attention by again making those secondary noises or saying their name, reward that with a high value treat, and if they can give me that, then they can get the true reward that they're actually looking for, which is being released to go greet the person. When it comes to greeting dogs on leash, I typically don't allow on leash greetings very often. And when I do, it's in very structured or planned situations. 
If it's just another dog walking down the street and somebody asks me if our dogs want to say hi and I don't know anything about that other dog, their sociability, their training history, I'll usually politely decline and say, no thank you, we're training and continue on my way. The only time that I'll typically allow on leash greetings with other dogs is if it's somebody I know, it's a dog that I know and I know that that dog typically has really good positive interactions with other dogs when on leash. And even so, I make sure that I'm again, prompting that attention, getting that calm behavior from my dog first, and making sure that my dog is in a nice calm state of mind before greeting. And whenever I do release my dog to go greet that other dog, I'm always very cautious and very intentional to keep my leash loose so that the dog doesn't experience any tension whenever they're greeting another dog on leash. Typically when I'm out and about and I'm training and I'm in public places, I don't allow on leash greetings at all. Another situation that we see a lot of frustration from our dogs whenever starting loose leash walking training is whenever there are differences in opinions of what the dog wants to do versus what the person wants to do. And typically that involves a dog who really wants to sniff everything and they wanna take in the world around them while the person wants them to be walking nicely at their side and not investigating the world, staying next to them and staying connected with them. While we are totally okay with sniffing and we are encouraging our clients to allow their dogs to sniff when out on walks because dogs are olfactory driven creatures, we want to make sure that whenever we're loose leash walking training that we're allowing our dogs both to sniff and explore the world around them so that way they are getting their needs met but also we're setting expectations of when we want the dog to be walking nicely with us as well. Whenever we're first starting loose leash walking training with our dogs and really establishing that criteria that we're looking for, I always recommend that you take very frequent breaks to release your dog to go sniff. We can also put sniffing on cue for our dogs and actually use it as a reinforcer alongside food. So if you ever notice that there's a certain part of your walk or there's a certain bush or something that your dog is showing interest in, you can actually use releasing them to go sniff as a reward for them instead of that food because it's something in the environment that they would like access to. So when it is a situation that there's something in the environment that your dog is showing interest in but you would not like for them to go investigate it, that's whenever we can be really specific with our dogs and let them know that they are not going to have access to investigate that thing at that time, whether that be something like roadkill or trash on the side of the road. We can either teach our dogs a let's go cue, which lets them know that we're gonna continue moving or we're going to change directions. We can use a positive interrupter, which is something like I mentioned earlier in the video where we can make secondary noises like or saying their name and rewarding them for giving you attention while you walk past that distraction as well. Um, we can also make a lot of space or increase space from the item so that our dog can be more successful. Generally, if it's something that's really interesting to your dog and you try to walk right past it while it's one or two feet away from them, they're really going to struggle with being able to stay connected with you and loose leash walk past that item or distraction. So it's really important to, as you are able, make as much space from distractions as you can. It's also going to be really helpful to increase your rate of reinforcement as you pass by something that you would like for your dog to ignore. Meaning, if we're walking and we're just feeding our dog every 10 or 15 steps or so for loose leash walking with us, but we're approaching something that's going to draw their attention away, we're going to feed a lot more frequently as we pass by that distraction. So that way our dog can be successful and we're not giving them an opportunity to make a mistake. Another situation that we see a lot of frustration from our dogs in this training happens whenever we as humans are walking too slow or too unnaturally, especially for our larger breed dogs or our higher energy dogs who cover a lot of ground really quickly, us humans are very slow compared to their walking pace. So we're asking a lot of them to ask them to walk with us instead of walk ahead and pull at the end of the leash. It's really important whenever you are getting started with loose leash walking training to pay attention to your own mechanics and your own walking speed. We need to make sure that we're walking at a natural pace because it's really common and really normal for people to get started with this training and as they're figuring out how they're going to be holding their leash, how they're going to be delivering their treats, to also be walking at a very unnaturally slow pace. As much as you can, try to keep your pace brisk, try to change directions frequently, and keep the training really interesting so that your dog stays connected with you and so it's not as challenging for them to keep up with you. 
Another frustrating situation for our dogs, especially our higher energy breeds, are breeds who are not used to being drilled over and over again, or our adolescent dogs who may be more interested in the environment than staying connected with us, happens whenever our training sessions are either too long, too tedious, or the value of the reinforcer that we have is not high enough for the job at hand. It seems like a really easy concept for us humans, for our dogs to walk next to us at our side, but we're asking our dogs to ignore a whole lot in their environment and stay with us. We need to make sure that, especially in initial training sessions, whenever we're establishing this criteria with our dogs, that our training sessions are very short instead of very long sessions that may try to last for the entirety of a normal walk. I like to have maybe three to five minutes of loose leash walking training practice, and then I release my dog to go sniff, go take in their environment. I will have a little play break with them, depending on what they like, to give their brain a moment to relax and reset again before I try to have another three to five minute session. I also make sure that the value of my reinforcer is on par with the difficulty of the environment that I'm asking my dog to work in. Around the house, it may be really easy to train your dog to walk nicely at your side in the backyard or in the front yard with kibble or maybe some dry biscuits. But whenever you start to increase that level of distraction, either going out in the neighborhood or taking your dog to a brand new place, we want to make sure that our reinforcer is a bit more high value so that our dog actually has something in it for them to pay attention to us instead of what's going on around. A few examples of high value treats that I like to bring out with me on walks can be, you know, string cheese. It can be cut up pieces of hot dog. It can be any kind of meat based treat. Usually those are more high value for some dogs. I also wanna make sure that my dog is motivated, my dog is focused, my dog is enjoying the reinforcer that I'm giving them. But I also wanna make sure that, especially with our more food motivated dogs, that I'm not using a reinforcer that is too high value for them. So if my dog is frantic, if my dog is jumping up to take the treats from me, if my dog is snatching the treats from me with a really hard mouth and maybe catching some of their teeth on my fingers, when normally they don't do that, that's usually a sign that my reinforcer is a little bit too high value and I need to decrease the value of the reinforcer to make sure that my dog can focus and is not getting over aroused by the reinforcer that I have for them. So while the goal of our loose leash walking training is to eventually get our dogs to a point where they can go on a nice loose leash walk with you throughout the entire neighborhood, it's going to take a while to get there and this takes a lot of practice at first. So while this is happening in the meantime, we also need to make sure that our dogs are getting exercise in other forms because these training sessions need to be short and they need to be high quality. So. If you as a human normally take your dog out with you whenever you're getting your own daily exercise, while you're going through this loose leash walking training process, it may benefit you to leave your dog at home while you go out for your jog or your walk. I also recommend that you make sure that all of your dog's needs are met before getting started with these training sessions, because like I mentioned earlier, this can be really difficult for our dogs to grasp. So I like to take my dogs out first for either a walk on a long line, whenever I'm taking them somewhere where I'm going to be practicing loose leash walking, I'll give them that longer space for them to fully take the world in around them, sniff, move their bodies more freely and get some exercise and some of those wiggles out first before I start my training session. If you have a dog that you want to take to private spaces or a long line's not feasible for you, I recommend checking out the app Sniff Spot. There are lots of great areas that you can rent for a low fee to take your dog and many of them are secure and fenced in, so it's a safe place for you to let your dog off leash if they are not off leash trained already. We also want to make sure that our dogs are thoroughly mentally stimulated as well. So playing games with a flirt pole in the backyard, doing some trick training around the house, giving your dog some puzzles to solve before getting started with training, or giving your dog some sniffing enrichment before getting started with that loose leash walking training are fabulous ways to help bring their energy levels down a little bit and put them in a better place to be focused and learn properly. So there are some dog breeds out there who really enjoy pulling sports, and there are even dogs that are not those stereotypical breeds that really enjoy pulling as well. So if you think that your dog gets a lot of enjoyment out of pulling, you can be really specific about when it's time to loose leash walk training, and then give them those appropriate outlets through dog powered sports as well. 
things like canna hiking, canna cross, and even bike drawing for our dogs who like to run really fast can be great options to give your dog an outlet to go fast, to pull, and that way they're in a better space after they've had opportunities to do those sports, to do some loose leash walking training with you as well. There are certain ways that you can make these different um, situations very specific for your dog so that they understand what the criteria is. We can usually use different equipment for different training sessions so they know that certain harnesses are for pulling and then certain harnesses or flat collars can also be for loose leash walking as well. In general, it's pretty normal for people to struggle with loose leash walking training or for them, themselves or their dogs to get frustrated. Normally this means that there's something missing in our training plan and it usually means that we need to either go back to an easier step and help our dogs understand the criteria again at an easier environment or at an easier level before we go back to that level of difficulty again or it means that we may need to just take a break from the training session. If you find yourself in a situation where your dog's frustrated, you're frustrated, neither of you are really getting anywhere, it is totally okay to just stop the session there, give both of yourselves a break, and regroup before trying again, whether that be the same day or coming back another day after doing some practice at an easier level. If you and your dog are working on progressing your loose leash walking training to different scenarios and different environments, you may find this video helpful, which is going to discuss progressing your training to real world environments.